The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X-Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talk Star Radio Network, and our vast and growing family of broadcast affiliates across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, 25 Asian countries, and now across Europe. If you'd like to give us a call, our toll-free number is 1-800-610-7035. That's one 800 610 Seven zero three five. Our email address is xzone at xzoneradio dot com. On MSN Messenger, Talkstar Radio at hotmail dot com, and our websites www dot xzoneradio dot com and www dot xzonetv dot com. Let me see. Today is uh, Tuesday. It is the twenty fourth day in the year of November, and on this date in eighteen fifty nine, Darwin published his theory on evolution. In eighteen seventy one, the NRA was founded. On this date in eighteen seventy four, barbed wire was patented. And today is, well, if it is your birthday, a very happy birthday to you from everyone here at the Exxon Radio Show and all our affiliates. And hey, gang, one month from today is Christmas Eve. Hmm, hump day and a three-day work week. Well, here it is. And Colin Hanks turns a 32 today. Uh, Stanley Livingston turns 50. And Pete Best, the original drummer for the Beatles, turns 68. Now, what you need to know, a Canadian woman lost her disability benefits for depression when her insurance agent found photos of her on Facebook at a male strip club. Seven bulls being used uh, on the set of a film starring Tom Cruise and Carmen Diaz broke free in Spain and slightly injured the two. Work two people, uh, Cruise and Diaz, were not on the set at, the se- at that time. And the white glove that Michael Jackson wore when he premiered his trademark Moonwalk in 1983 sold at an auction. Are you ready for this? $350,000 U.S. And finally, for the record... Sarah Palin's memoir sold 300,000 copies on the first day, which is more than Hillary Clinton, but less than Bill Clinton. When I come back from this two-minute commercial break, I will be joined by the one and only Frank Ogden, who is known by millions around the world as Dr. Tomorrow. Once again, we're going to be talking about Frank's uh, futuristic look his futuristic outlook, I should say, on the way things are going. And you'll have to excuse me today, Exxon Nation. I'm still battling that flu and cold. So if I seem sa- sniffed up and clogged up, it's because I am. And we're also going to be uh, talking to Dr. Uh, tomorrow about his book deal that he's offering to everyone here in the Exxon Nation. Here's our contact information. If you'd like to visit us on the web, it's www.xzoneradio.com. You can always send me an email to exxon at xzoneradio.com on MSN Messenger you can chat with us during the broadcast at talkstarradio at hotmail.com and of course toll free at 1-800-610-7035 The X-Zone with yours truly Rob McConnell starts officially right now for Tuesday November the 24th in the year 2009 The X-Zone is truly a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard it's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality And we come to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. And then the show is repeated in its entirety from 2 a.m. until 6 a.m. on the Talk Star Radio Network. Dr. Tomorrow is with me when I return from this break. Right here live and around the world from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada.
Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x.com. ZBN.net. Welcome back to the Exxon Doctor Tomorrow. Frank Ogden is my special guest for this hour. www.drtomorrow.com. That's drtomorrow.com. And uh, joining us all the way from beautiful uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, is the one and only Dr. Tomorrow. Hey, Dr. Tomorrow, how are things today in BC? Oh, they're just fine. And I was just thinking that when you did your lead in that you know you're a lot like swine flu. Oh. You're global and you're viral. Oh, thank you, I think. I hope nobody gets a shot for the exome, though. Oh, well, I've got something that can relieve it. So tell me, Frank, as, as a futurist, and, and that's exactly what you are, you are a man who saw many years ago just a few of the things that we are seeing in today's technological world. Uh, you know, you've, written, uh, you've been written up in the Financial Post as the 20th century visionary, you took Alvin Toffler's coined phrase, electronic cottage, in the 1980s further than that. And in 1979, you began monitoring 200 satellites and 2,000 data banks to provide a video clipping service for forward thinkers. Are we as far ahead as you thought we would be back then? No, we're a little further ahead. What do you see as uh, the... Uh, it's uh, really hard, you know, to keep up when... when uh, First of all, you know, go 50 years back, mm -hmm. and America produced most of its own whatever it needed. But now you're getting it from, you know, 200 plus uh, other countries. And so it's all one marketplace, and you have to keep up to that marketplace. Like uh, I said so often, you know, you're uh, living in the age of a bulldozer. And if uh, you don't get on that bulldozer, you're going to be part of the road. All right, but when we look at the global trade market and how it's affecting us, there was a story today on CNN where some of the drywall that's being used in homes today that has been imported from China is now being found to not only cause health hazards, but isn't just isn't standing up to the weather specifications and the manufacturing specifications that U.S. Uh, manufacturers are are uh, are adhered to by the uh, rules and regulations of the manufacturers. Yeah, well, it's like many things. We uh, built something uh, 25 years ago, and uh, it's far better today to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things like that. It's just like diseases. Look, all the diseases that we don't get anymore, but we're living longer, so... Uh, we get some of them in our later years. 
But is is global importing and exporting and trade really necessary, or does this take away from the from the workforces of of the United States and Canada? For example, if the drywall that is being imported from China it was to be manufactured in the United States, that would increase a new that would increase uh, job employment, and it would also help the local economy. So why don't we just knock off a lot of this trade and stick to made in the good old U.S. era, made in Canada? Well, it's because it's the survival of the fittest. Um, Just like um, um, many people have said before, because um, you have to um, be ready for the tomorrow. And people are not ready, especially in North America. I think uh, the Japanese are still the ones that are, uh, they're born looking at the future. You know, Frank, it scares the hell out of me when I call up Bell Canada or some software companies and I end up with someone in India that I have a hell of a hard time understanding what they're saying because all the all the all the telecenters now are in India. You know, like, why don't we just keep the jobs here? Why are we giving jobs away and increasing the unemployment situation? To me, this means the government and major corporations are not working for the people. They're just working for themselves. Well, um, you can't do everything. And... uh the six billion people out there now and they're willing to work harder and longer and in many cases more efficiently uh, at a lower price. It, but still, the whole world is uh, looking for where's the best marketplace. I understand that, but when there's so much talk about unemployment and the poor quality of workmanship that many of the importers are, uh, are, uh, are adhering to because they don't have the strict regulations that the manufacturing communities have in Canada and the United States. You know, to me, this is all wrong. Keep the jobs in Canada. Keep the jobs in the United States. Keep the economy in the United States and Canada. Canada. Hey, let the government over there take care of those people. We don't need their crap over here on this side of the ocean. You know, and, and when I hear well, this... You can't, you can't build up a barrier for that. In America, you can't even keep... Uh, immigrants out of your country. That's because they're not trying hard enough. Well, you're building those big walls. Why not? Other countries do it. Why can't the United States and Canada do the same thing? Hey, you don't like it here? Get the the hell out. The people outside of the country know how to dig tunnels. Well, we should learn very fast how to, instead of build walls, build a build barriers so they can't keep getting through. Like, you know what? I understand that the United States and Canada are both countries that were built by people from other countries, excluding the First Nations. And I understand that, you know, there are certain things and there are certain politically correct things that we are expected to do. But when you see the draw on the economy that shipping all these jobs over to China and India are causing to the local and uh, glo- federal economies, I think the federal governments in both countries have to step in because what they're doing is they're saying, all right, so we can get product A in uh, the United States or Canada for, let's say, a dollar. But if we go and buy it in Japan or China or India, it'll cost us 30 cents. Then we add on the shipping, da, da, da. It's going to cost us 75 cents. Look at this. We're saving a whole quarter. Sure, you're saving a quarter in one hand, but what you're doing is you're increasing unemployment in the other and, and welfare. So it's costing you more in the long run. Yes, but these countries uh, won't be the leaders in the future if we do everything right. You know, look at the terrorists, the whole, mm-hmm. that's a real problem for everybody. Sure is. But they didn't have the money to have their own air force to any extent. And... Um, so what did they do? They said, well, let's steal planes and drive them into high-rise buildings. Um, that's how they uh, are doing many things now. Look at their, uh, in uh, Afghanistan where, and many other places where they, the terrorists are uh, knocking off more people with uh, bombs mm-hmm. and road high, hidden bombs than uh, we do with our machine guns. And so... They're driven to it, and also, remember, they have been trained to look for death. They, they love death just as much as we love life, and sometimes we're, that's a disadvantage. When you look at the entire scenario in the Middle East and Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran, 
The United States is the strongest our Air, our Army Air Force, uh, let's say the strongest armed forces in the world. However, they are battlefield trained. What we're doing is we're sending soldiers who are battlefield trained into urban urban warfare, and it's not working. Well, that's the way you have to change. They're ready to change to, so that they do are at least equal to mm-hmm. us. And now we're finding out, especially in uh, in um, Afghanistan uh, and maybe many other countries, um, they know how to do it the hard way. And we're and then it turns out to be the simple way and at far less cost. Most of the Canadian troops that have been killed there <clears throat> have all been done by the uh, the bombs just in the on the road. Yeah. My my suggestion is bring the troops home because as I see it now, the United States has left itself militarily wide open to attack. Oh, they are, and that'll they'll be. Uh, more, they haven't even used bio uh, instruments of war yet. They're going to have all kinds of things. They can send all kinds of bacteria and germs, and just like the the uh, swine flu. Um, and you're going to get more and more of that. And we're not ready for it. What do you see as the biggest? When, when you've been king of the hill for a hundred years. Uh, you don't know what to think when they come sneak in and and you can't take a drink of water out of your uh, tap. What do you see as the next major terrorist threat? Um, I think it'll be uh, bio attacks. It'll be um, maybe they'll sprinkle something. Remember, here's what the Japanese did in the last war. They... Um, had uh, balloons, and they mm-hmm. were blown with the prevailing wind to went across the Pacific and all up and down the British Columbia coast here in Canada. Uh, they started forest fires. Yeah, nobody. Cool and, and yet, they uh, the wind. They worked with the wind, and they went off here and caused fire. Not much, but as it worked out, but they could get here and damage the country, and they just were taking. Uh, taking uh, their benefit from nature, and we did we're, we're, we didn't know how to handle it. We still don't know how to handle that one. Doctor Frank, uh, Doctor Tomorrow is our special guest. Frank Ogden joins us uh, from Vancouver, British Columbia. His website is www.drtomorrow.com. That's www.drtomorrow. Dot com and the good doctor and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. 1-800-610-7035 is always toll free. My email address is exxon at xzoneradio.com and on MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as the Exxon continues right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on Talkstar. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 
401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x. ZBN.net. Welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and uh, Dr. Tomorrow is my very special guest this hour. That's our good friend Frank Ogden, all the way from Vancouver in British Columbia. And uh, how did you get the name Dr. Tomorrow, and why did you want to become Dr. Tomorrow? I've, I don't think I've ever asked you that. Um, well, the um, uh, I was getting interviewed by Sandy Ross uh, when in Toronto when he was editor of the Toronto Star, that's the biggest at the time, the biggest paper in Canada. And um, after interviewing me, he said, gee, I've been your doctor tomorrow. I said, I like that. Can I use it? And he said, yeah. And I told my lawyer to get it trademarked the next day. And the rest and that, is history. That's history, yeah. Tell us about that book, that very special book offer that you are offering to the members of the Exxon Nation. Yeah. What about it? Tell us about it. Come on, promote it. Okay. <laughs> well, well, first of all, um, I wrote these what I call quantum books. They were uh, uh, the spine was a little spiral wire, but they sold like crazy. Mm-hmm. And I wrote wrote one a month for fifteen months nonstop. And then I started selling them. And the, um, uh, the whole idea was to lower the cost. Well, now I was selling those at $10 a book, which was cheap for a book in those days. My, some of my other books that I'm putting on the e-books are, uh, were sold at 25 But anyhow, I had $15, $10 a piece. That's 150 bucks. But now... I've gotten out of the Gutenberg era where you had to have a lot of machinery and printing presses and time, and it was hard to not only sell but to uh, uh, circulate them and deliver them. So what I've done now, uh, I've uh, got my own format. I use liquid pixels and light, and I can uh, sell them. The whole 15 that was 150 bucks. I now sell them for $10.00. And the first one, that's the one I'm giving away to everybody. But remember, today you can cover the planet just like you do. And so I have the potential market is 6 billion people. Well, once I start getting a volume, then the price could maybe even go down a little bit more. Because, mm-hmm. And it's very simple. I've got the, it all set up here. And as uh, soon as pers- any of the potential buyers... Uh, want to get the free book? Just send if they send me their their email address. I just hit two buttons here, and my they get out of here in eight seconds, most of them. But the whole library, the fifteen buck li- fifteen uh, book library, uh, they go in t- well under two minutes. Wow! Just think. And here's a think of this: if you wanted to send a book to the International Space Station. Books were say weigh a pound. Their rate for anything that comes there one pound ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. The way I do it with an e-book, I can send it for a nickel. All right. Now, what are some of the titles of the books that uh, that are in this? Uh, let's call it uh, Doctor Doctor Tomorrow Library. Uh, well, they were uh, like Beyond Work, 
and that's about the technology doing a lot of the jobs. Uh, beyond the body, what we can do with their mind and looking forward, and I think the mental telepathy will be here maybe uh, <clears throat> not before I croak, but uh, certainly before you do. And uh, so uh, you're going to have things that you never imagined before. Uh, just like who could think of all the things uh, when I was a kid that has happened in my lifetime. And it's accelerating. That's the big change. Change always happened, but now it's accelerating at a very, very rapid uh, rate. I used to, uh, going through the, my uh, computer, scanning whatever's on my screen, and I used to get one, maybe two, uh, items a week. I'm now getting 16 a day. Wow. They're, these are in, ones that interest me and that I uh, will immediately spend time looking at and where, what can I do with those. Because when you have something the world has never seen, that's a big benefit, a big asset. What has been, and, the, what has been the biggest uh, surprise uh, that the future has held that, that you've witnessed? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, longevity. Uh, here I am, still a kid, and I'm 89. God bless you. You know, and i got most of my marbles, and uh, I'm relatively healthy. I have, I've, you know, I'm, I've got uh, prostate cancer, but, of course, that's quite fashionable today. One eight seven seven six ten seven zero three five is toll free if you'd like to give us a call and speak with the one and only Doctor Tomorrow, Frank Ogden, who is my special guest this hour. www.drtomorrow.com. That's www.drtomorrow.com. If you would like to get your first copy of uh, Doctor Tomorrow's book, and which copy are you giving out, uh, Frank, as your first copy? The number one, and they can read that, and the rest of them. Uh, are almost identical to it, except they have different things like, uh, oh, uh, under the water, uh, higher in the skies, things that uh, are going to be the future of tomorrow because there's millions, literally millions of people around the world now, entrepreneurs and uh, uh, that are coming up with something that the world has never seen before. And many of those things we can now do because yesterday's technology wasn't here 10, 20, or 50 years ago. When looking into the future, what do you, what do you use to assimilate what will happen in the future? How do you, how do you, base, what do you base your formulas on? Well, first of all, uh, I, uh, never, I, de- I deliberately did not go to university because I felt you're in a package there. And a lot of the uh, this economic problem, you know, is be, in my opinion, is because when you have a million uh, MBA uh, students that have graduated, they're all thinking alike because they were taught to think alike, mm-hmm. much like the the terrorists have been taught to. They want to. They were looking for death, and so because that's they've been sold in. You know, the big thing now with uh, the terrorists, they were promised 72 virgins, and now they're running out of virgins. So, you know, that's some of their advertising that can't, they can't fulfill now. Why is there so much hate and terrorism in the world today, Frank? Well, everybody, it's changed. When they're changed, people get afraid. And also... So many of us have been uh, taught to follow certain paths, and they were great. But today, you're going into a new jungle, and the jungle, new jungle doesn't have paths or guideposts or signs or uh, uh, it, no roads, no nothing there is like it was the day before. And I spent about a third of my life in jungles, and I think that was uh, far better than going through uh, 12 years of a university. You have to be open-minded. You have to accept everything. So, so 
what you're saying is that uh, the per- a person who goes to university has a very closed mind because all they know is what they've been taught, and they can't see outside of the box. That's right. Box, qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, not only that, but um, uh, they uh, they all know the same thing, and it's like a, a squad on an airplane. If the lead pilot makes a dive and doesn't come out of it, the rest of them are following him. And that was what happened in the Devil's Triangle, uh, you know, south of Bermuda. Sure. So so let me ask you about that. What is your opinion on the Bermuda Triangle and other zones of mystery, mystery throughout the world? Well, um, you know, uh, I ran into some people, and uh, one was Jeff Sterling. He owned 14 radio and TV stations in Canada mm-hmm. years ago. And he paid me uh, uh, gloriously to go through the uh, Devil's Triangle with, uh, or the Bermuda Triangle, uh, with his uh, million-dollar yacht. And uh, they have had a lot of fatalities there, but it's because of the traffic. It's like, uh, you know, where you have an intersection in uh, Toronto or Vancouver, and you have a lot of fatalities because it's a lot of traffic and so in my opinion the Bermuda Triangle is dangerous because they have a lot of uh, shipping uh, traffic. And of course uh, during the heyday of the Bermuda Triangle the navigational systems that we have in place today based on uh, satellite uh, navigation wasn't available to the mariners, and uh, there are certain areas within the Bermuda Triangle back then that were totally oblivious to any any radar communication, any radio communication, or satellite communication. Yeah, well, it's just like a jungle. The ocean is uh, a jungle without trees. And there, you think you can see, but you can't. Yeah. You know, we're coming up on Christmas here, Doctor, tomorrow, and uh, I'd like to know what Doctor... Tomorrow, uh, would suggest parents buying their kids for Christmas. Well, I just got my Kindle, and uh, looking at it, uh, it's not doesn't look like much. I said I'm paying three hundred bucks for that, but then once I opened it and worked around in it, remember it can hold fifteen hundred books. Uh, it is worth that price, and. Uh, it's small, it's light, and for people that travel, mm-hmm. boy, it's the thing to have. Like in here, of course, I've got all my uh, these books that uh, uh, you just mentioned and we're you know, giving away free for the introduction. Um, we, I have them all in there, and so uh, and they make a good, if somebody wants to give a gift, get the Kindle and put my uh, 15 uh, e-books in there. Now, for, uh, those, for those people who are listening... That's, a, that's their future. What's in a Kindle is futuristic. It all has right. to be to fit in there. Describe the Kindle to our listeners who may not know what we're talking about. A Kindle is like a, a hard drive, only it looks a lot better. And um, it can hold tremendous amounts of data. And that can be put in there electronically. And so what I did... I took the, uh, scanned all the books that were in print. I had them in electronic format, format, and then I put them out as books. And uh, I can, they travel at practically no cost because they're going over the Internet and they're downloaded. Uh, well, when I upload to ship them, it's only eight seconds. And then when somebody gets the whole library, that's... Um, 15 books, uh, they'll come in pretty well less than two minutes on any of the recent uh, computers. And if they have an old one, it may take three minutes. One eight seven seven. No, I'm sorry, one eight hundred six ten seven zero three five is toll free. That's one eight hundred six ten seven zero three five. My special guest is Dr. Tomorrow, and his website is www.drtomorrow.com. That's www.drtomorrow.com. During the break, uh, Frank, you and I were talking about 2012, uh, the end of the Mayan calendar, all this doom and gloom crap that's going around now. What is your opinion of the end of the world scenarios? Well, um, I think they're good in the movies. 
but uh, I don't think um, that's what they thought. And uh, they were pretty smart, you know, but then they disappeared, so they couldn't have been that smart. Mm. And um, I think it's wise to hear those things, but not believe them, because uh, there could be things far worse, like a media, a huge meteorite hitting uh, our planet. Uh, that, you know, has possibility. But, but uh, that's the hazards of being in the global picture. You know, there, there, are, there are experts at NASA who say that they would know well in advance that we oh, were yes, going I to be, they would. we were going to be have any problems with yes. uh, with an asteroid hitting the planet or any celestial uh, event happening to that magnitude. What well, about and if, the, if it was coming mm-hmm. as it comes closer, they could erect some kind of a uh, a platform that could hit it and just tilt it one degree or something, and it would poss- possibly miss the Earth. Frank, stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break. Exxon Nation, Dr. Tomorrow is my special guest. If you'd like to get your first complimentary book from the Frank Ogden Dr. Tomorrow Library, the first one is free. The other 14 will cost you. Are you ready for this? Woo! A whole $10. How to get them? Well, you can go to www.drtomorrow.com and uh, contact Frank through his website. Or you can send us your email to xzone at xzoneradio.com, and we'll be glad to forward that to Frank for you. Once again, that's if you'd like to get your free copy of Frank's first book. No, risk-free. You don't have to buy another thing. It's yours to keep. Send me an email, xzone at xzoneradio.com, or go to Dr. Tomorrow's site at www.drtomorrow.com. Still to come on tonight's show, we have uh, our good friend Daryl Sims is going to be joining us. Uh, Daryl and I are going to be talking about alien implants. We'll be speaking to Jeff Belanger from ghostvillage.com and then Dr. Alicia Stanton. Wow, we have a fun-filled, impacted, packed, and educational entertainment. Oh, wow, we've just got a great show. So whatever you do, don't go away. We'll be right back after this commercial break right here in the X-Zone. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.exxon.com. XZBN.net. Frank Ogden is our special guest of this hour, Exonation, www.drtomorrow.com. That's www.drtomorrow.com. As always, Frank, uh, we love having you here in the Exxon. Uh, what do you see for the year 2010 as far as futurism is concerned? Well, People are going to see things that they never saw up till today. For instance, all this is accelerating now so much. And so we have to do everything fast. Mm -hmm. And now not everybody can take that. Uh, You know, they burn out or they uh, uh, just can't keep up with everything. But I can do more with my computer now than maybe three or four people. Wow. Because so much of it is is uh, done quickly, electronically. Now, that's how I go books. You know, you were telling me about uh, you don't have enough staff to do ship them out, but it's just hitting the button, so I don't mind hitting the button. You know, I'm not, that's naughty. What kind of computers <laughs> do you see? What, what kind of computers do you see in the future? Well, I, I'm biased. I, uh, since I started in this game, 35 years ago, I saw an Apple, and I'm still on Apple, and I still love it. And my booking agent for my speaking engagements, I've been trying to get him Apple, and he's lost $100,000 because he had two major uh, breakdowns with his uh, computer, non-Apple. And um, <clears throat> it took him uh, roughly two weeks to get the two incidents fixed up. He was out of business for two weeks. Can't be out of business these days. Happens again to him, you know, who knows. Time is money. 
Time is money. All right, quickly, right. Give, give us the information on how our listeners can get a free copy of your first book and how they can get the other 14 for only $10. Uh, yeah, and we give them the one the, the one that got free, we give them one in the package because it's cheaper to give it to them another one. Anyhow, all they do is uh, they can do it through your services. Uh, just get hold of your uh, uh, email number. And mine is uh, drtomorrow, T-O-M-O-R-R-O-W, at shaw, S-H-A-W, dot C-A. CA for Canada, and um, give me your um, email address, and the the free sample will go out to you in, within 24 hours, usually within an hour, but we say 24 hours now, depending on when their <clears throat> address comes in. And um, you can take these books, you can do whatever you want, you can't sell them, that's the only thing, because it's copyrighted and trademarked. But you can show it to a friend, uh, you can loan it to a friend, you can do whatever you want with it, as long as you don't get in the commercial bracket. Frank, always great talking to you. Take care of yourself, my friend. Exonation, if you'd like to get a copy of uh, Dr. Ogden's first book, visit his website at www.drtomorrow.com or send an email to drtomorrow, that's D-R-T-O-M-O-R-R-O-W at shaw.ca. When I come back from the news at the top of the hour at six and a half minutes past, Daryl Sims is my guest. We're going to be talking about aliens, alien implants, and UFOs as the X Zone continues right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> 